Well, uh, usually I guess you don't get to speak here if you're a student. So I'm, I feel really honored to be here. Uh, and I still mostly identify with the students here, which is uh, one reason I really enjoy coming here. And, and uh, it's just an amazing, amazing event. And um, thank you so much for organizing it. Now, I wanted to share with you uh, that when I started Google, um, you know, with Sergey, as was mentioned, you know, it seems sort of obvious now that we should have done it. But at the time, we were really scared. And we were actually, you know, we were grad students, like many, many of you students. And, you know, we, we were enjoying getting our PhDs, and, and we haven't quite finished yet as a result. And uh, although Stanford recently gave us a reinstatement form uh, when we gave a speech there. <laughs> Um, but at the time, we were really scared, like, oh, we're not going to get our degrees, you know, we're going to start this company, it'll be kind of lame, and, you know, <laughs> our parents were all upset, and, you know, there are all sorts of issues. And so, um, one of the things that I'd been through as a student uh, was some leadership training, and one of the things they taught us was to have, uh, to not be afraid of failure, and, and instead to have the goal to fail a lot quickly, and then eventually you'll succeed. And I sort of took this to heart, and they also had a slogan called Healthy Disregard for the Impossible. And they actually made you write down sort of the things you would do that were kind of impossible, but you thought you might really accomplish. And that's really stuck with me in, in uh, everything that I've tried to do. And I think, you know, it was very, very close that we wouldn't have started the company. And I think there are many of you out there in sort of similar situations. You know, do you want to take a little bit more risk? Uh, do you want to try something out? And, you know, even if you don't succeed, we we actually tried many things that didn't work. Um, you know, Google happened to work pretty well. Uh, but there are many things that we did that didn't. But we don't worry about those, right, because we, we tried many things. So I just encourage you to take a little more risk uh, in life. And I think uh, if you do it often enough, it will really pay off. Now, I wanted to make another point. So I think leverage is really, really important. And one of the things I was really lucky, my dad was a computer science professor, and we had a computer when I was really young. And somehow I sort of realized, like, oh, you know, the computer can do a lot of things, and, you know, I'm kind of lazy, and, uh, you know, having the computer do things is good. Uh, and that really gives you leverage. And um, it was amazing when we started the company, even when we had about three employees, we had several million people who used the search engine. And we actually accidentally published our phone number at some point on the website. And people started calling us, and we couldn't do our business because the phone just kept ringing. And we had to take down the phone number. But our, the computers were able to actually answer all those people and do something that was really useful for the world. And I think um, for all of you, there are many areas uh, where there's leverage available in the world, where you know one or two people, a good idea, a lot of hard work can really make a difference. There's many, many things like that. And it's good not to forget that, but it's good to look for those things. Um, Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And one of the things that surprised me, uh, that's a very broad mission. It's a lot of work. We're not going to achieve it anytime soon, right? Uh, it's almost an impossible task. But it's an exciting task and one that you can get other people excited about and they can help you. And one of the things that also surprised me is it's sometimes easier to do something that's harder because other people get excited about it and you can get much more resource. Uh, you can get tremendous resources to solve a hard problem, whereas you might only get minor resources to solve a small problem. Um, right now, Google is available in over 100 languages. And I'll just give you another tidbit about um, uh, sort of where you can get leverage. Uh, we had some engineers work really hard. They're trying to build artificial intelligence. Uh, they're trying to make computers smart. And they accidentally built a really good spell checker along the way uh, using the technology they wanted to use to build artificial intelligence. And it's on Google now. And if you misspell something, which I do continuously, I can't spell it all, um, it helps a lot to be able to find things to spell it correctly. So it's a very important issue with quality of search. The spell checker that they wrote, uh, with a much bigger goal in mind, actually understands all different languages. Uh, it understands languages that the people who implemented it don't speak. 
uh, because it basically uses all the information on the web and it does clever things. Um, and that's really, really cool. I mean, it's really interesting to build stuff like that. <laughs> so I'll just I'll, I'll finish up quickly, and then I'll, I think I'll have some time for questions. Um, what we really want to do is build the ultimate search engine. And uh, that would understand everything in the world. It would understand exactly what you wanted when you typed a query. Um, and it would give you back the exact right thing instantly. Uh, so, you know, I could type in there, what should I say today for my speech? And it could be back a good answer, right? <laughs> um, and that's sort of the point. That's artificial intelligence. That means it would be smart. And the thing that's fascinating about what we're able to do is that everything that we do that gets us closer to building a better search engine gets us closer to making it smart. And that's just a fun thing to do if you're an engineer, right? If you're trying to build things, it's just an exciting scientific pursuit. Um, the final thing I want to say is we were also uh, very lucky to be able to allocate some of our equity before we went public uh, to sort of uh, philanthropic means, and we're calling that Google.org. And uh, uh, we're lucky enough to have, I guess, about $700 million in that, and also uh, employee time and other resources. And one of the things we're really looking to do is to apply the same kind of innovation and leverage with that money, uh, so not to do what uh, typical nonprofits have done, but to say, you know, can we do some social entrepreneurship things? Can we establish businesses in places where they don't exist uh, and really do innovative things there? So I'm very excited about that too.